Good evening, welcome to lecture 5 of topic 1 of unit 4, Solenoids. And we're going to be covering the main ideas of chapter 7.3 of book 2. Uh, please complete the reading for that before your next class. Here are your learning intentions and success criteria. Please pause the video and attempt to complete the knowledge and skills table down here on the bottom right. Okay, we've got a fairly brief one here. Uh, in a learning intention, students will be able to draw and calculate the magnetic field strength through a solenoid. Uh, in your success criteria, you should be able to explain what a solenoid does to the magnetic field. And you should be able to calculate the magnitude and direction. So in terms of our knowledge, well, the first one is really, what's this new word? What is a solenoid? If you don't know what it is, it's pretty hard to recognize how, when to use that information. But in terms of skills, very similar to the last time, where you need to calculate the magnetic field strength for a solenoid, and how do you determine direction uh, of the field in the uh, solenoid? Should be a direction of the field, I guess, in there. Uh, so, let's talk about what we got up to last video. Here is a wire uh, with current. We can see that symbolized by I. And here is the magnetic field around that wire. And we can observe that the on the left here of the wire, the field lines are coming up out of the page. Remember, by our curve rule, uh, if here's the direction of the current, uh, the fingers are curving around. Though that was a bit darker, I do see that. So here the field is coming out, and here the field is going into the page. But what if we take the wire and we curl it? So we bend it like this. Now... We when we talked about magnetic field strength in the last video, it was a, we saw it as a reflection of the number of field lines going through a given area, so it's proportional to this ratio here. Um, I didn't put an equals because we haven't got to that formula. And if we look at this change in shape, we can see that curving it has clearly changed how close the field lines are on the outside and how close the field lines are on the inside. Though I think when I ended up drawing this, this did end up being a bit longer than that. So if you imagine curling that around, you'd see that these bits would come a lot closer together, while these ones would be uh, definitely more spread apart. Okay. Now, there is a formula for this shape. Uh, it's not a very complicated formula, but it's not part of the syllabus. What we're interested in having many of these curves, many of these loops put together. So, a solenoid is a coil of wire wrapped many times and it generates a magnetic field okay uh, but the good thing is this magnetic field is basically uniform now you can calculate the field outside the solenoid but that's kind of useless uh, and the math is very very complicated we want to know about the field inside the solenoid and it's this equation here b magnetic field equals mu naught n times i but this N is a little bit annoying. Now N stands for the number of turns per meter. And to work out the number of turns per meter, well, you work out the number of turns and you divide it by how long the solenoid is. Now this first equation, this one up here, this is given to you in your formula booklet. But this, I, this concept of what the N represents is not. So you, that is something you'll need to remember. Now if we take these and put them together, this is the solenoid formula. Now, as I said, this one here on the left, B equals mu naught Ni, that's given in the formula booklet. This more complicated one, B equals mu naught capital N, I've differentiated the Ns here, I over L is not. However, um, it's a fairly easy replacement to make. Uh, it's just something you should remember about the idea of a solenoid and what that N represents. Going through our units, B is magnetic field strength in Tesla, but it's the field strength in the center of the solenoid. Uh, and they actually mean dead in the center. While um, we can effectively say everywhere inside the solenoid would be the same, there is some small variance as you go towards the edge of the solenoid, uh, but we just ignore it for now. So uh, we're going to go with that. It's the field strength inside the solenoid, and we're going to play with some of those in class. Uh, now, for this formula, little n, number of turns per meter, uh, capital N, number of turns, L, length in meters, 
I is still current in amperes and mu naught is the magnetic constant uh, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 and that is provided for you in your formula booklet as well. Now how do we do direction? Well to do direction we have another right hand rule. Uh, I'll turn on the light for this so you can see my hand. Now if your fingers curl in the direction of the current, I'll do it this way, if the fingers curl the direction of the current, so if the current is going this way around my solenoid, my north pole of my magnet would be pointing this direction. Okay, so let's have a look at some diagrams on this. So here we can see that the field is going into the page on the top, and it's coming up out of the page okay, on the bottom there, and so the field goes to the left. You can see that there. Here is the same solenoid, just with a sort of 3D drawing here, and we can see that the field is going up, okay, so my fingers up and curl, and so the north pole is to the left. If the arrows are drawn pointing down, curling this way, and our what's we call it? Our field would be pointing towards the right there. Okay, so let's do an example. Uh, this is a fairly standard question. There's only one example in this chapter, uh, and all solenoid questions at this level are pretty similar. It's going to be important for the induction stuff we get to a little bit later, but the basic idea of a solenoid is pretty straightforward. Uh, a solenoid here has a length of 25 centimeters and contains 600 turns, arranged as shown in figure 5. It carries a current of 3 amps, and we want to do two things. What is the magnetic field strength? in the center of the solenoid and which end will be the north pole okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly redraw this now can't draw for bunk so there's our battery and our battery comes down to here and here. Now it travels down across it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go across, 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 across. Okay. And so we can see here that our, uh, remember, here's our positive, and conventional current flows out of the positive back into the negative. We learnt that back in unit three. Uh, and so here it would be going down, back up, down, back up, down, back up, down, back up. Okay, so we've kind of done most of part B there and we'll get to that in a second. The I here was equal to 3 amps. Okay. The number of coils, uh, capital N, I'm going to use, capital coil was 600 and the length is equal to 25 centimeters so 0 0.25 meters now I'm going to do the working out twice I'm going to do the working out using uh, Walding's method uh, and then or more the um, uh, what's what I'm looking for Walding's method which follows the syllabus and then I'm going to just show you how you could just use the last formula uh, both would be fine so we're dealing with a solenoid, so we know that B, sorry, not beta, B equals mu naught uh, N times I. Now we've got our I, but we don't have our N, and mu naught is just a constant. So we know little n equals, because we're after the number of turns per meter. So we need the 600 divided by 0 0.25. Uh, which in this case would equal 2400. Okay, now we can take that and substitute all these numbers in. And we would get that B equals 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 times 2400 times 3 amps. Oh, I didn't get my calculator out. Which would be 4 times pi 10 to the negative 7. Three gives me 
9 times 10 to the negative 3. 9.05, but uh, our smallest here is two significant figures, so let's just round it off to 9. Uh, times 10 to the negative 3, Tesla. Now, the way you could do this as well is to just chuck your numbers straight in and go B equals mu naught n i. Always write your original. B equals mu naught n i over L. And now if we substitute everything in, uh, we can see that we're doing basically both things at the exact same time. 600 times 3 over 0 0.25 and you'll get the same answer. Um, do note that a lot of Walden's uh, work here with magnetic stuff takes the mu naught and actually works out what 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 is which is you know pi, let's just round off pi to 3 4 times 3 is 12 and so that's about 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6. Not exactly that but he does do that calculation for a lot of his working. So if you're looking at his and going, where did this number come from? It's because 4 pi is 12, a bit over 12, but let's say 12, uh, 12 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, so do be aware of that. All right. Now, let's grab the tablet back. Okay, so nice quick one today. So in this video we've done the following. We've seen how changing the shape of a wire will change the magnetic field. We've defined what a solenoid is and established the formula about its properties. And finally we've looked at how to calculate the strength of a magnetic field inside that solenoid. Uh, for your entrance slip, uh, please access uh, O-Book and access it, chapter 7.3 of book 2. Uh, please complete questions 1 to 5 in chapter 7.3 and copy your answers into the 4.1.5 space on eLearn. Thanks for listening guys, have a great evening.